The migratory monarch butterfly makes its way from the south across the lake and up into our neighborhood where a pollinator pathway is waiting for it. Hello, my name is Echo Railton. Welcome to my garden. It's considered a pollinator hub. There are other gardens like mine, which are all native plants, or at least 80% native plants, we're doing our best. Uh, and the reason that that's important is that the pollinators local to this area require that for their habitat and their food source. We're encouraging other neighbors to have pollinator hubs on their properties too. And we've also got a school and a public park involved. We're calling it the Danforth Gardens Pollinator Pathway. When I moved in, I joined the Neighborhood Association. And you'll meet Misha, who is another member. He and I worked on making a pollinator pathway through our neighborhood. The sites were chosen first by enthusiastic community members. The reason a lot of us chose to put our showiest gardens in the front is so that we were a beacon for the neighbors, showing what a native plant garden could look like. I thought it was important to show that you can plant a beautiful space with native plants. We've learned that some of the pollinators have a very short range, so it's important that our gardens are not so far away from one another so that they can go from one place to the other. And other pollinators, as you know, monarchs, for instance, have a very long range. So making a pollinator corridor helps them find the food that they need and the habitat that they need in a variety of spaces. Our pollinator pathway has at least 10 residential gardens in it and also a big garden at the elementary school where we're getting the children involved. We also got children involved in planting at a nearby playground called Oats Park. If you're thinking of starting your own pollinator patch, what you're gonna need to do is first decide where you want it to be and then choose plants that make sense in that area, whether they be sun-loving plants or shady plants. Then look at how many plants you want to include. I think that three blooming in spring, another three that bloom in the summer, and three that bloom in the fall is ideal because then you'll never be in a position where you're not offering nectar to the bees and butterflies. Then you're going to need to prepare the site. Plants can cost between five and eight dollars each or find local people who are already into native plants. You might be able to get your plants for free. For a larger space, such as the school garden or at the park, you'll need volunteers. We had our neighborhood association we could lean on, so there were already people on a mailing list. Uh, we also contacted the neighborhood groups through Facebook and printed off posters that said, worker bees needed, and put them on telephone poles all around the neighborhood. In the first couple of years, it's important to water and weed the garden but after a few years, it no longer becomes necessary. I have learned a tremendous amount since starting this garden, and I'm so happy to be able to give this property that I was not using back to the pollinators. I, I feel a sense of accomplishment, like in a world where I feel often like there's nothing I can do about the planet and the ecosystem and all the problems that be, this is what I can do. This is a tiny piece of reconciliation with the land of um, being eco-conscious. Uh, when I see bees and butterflies in here having a great time, it makes me so happy.